Okay. Hi, everybody. So today I'm going to be talking to you about parental dilemma, why it happens and what we can do about it from both a parent's and a child's perspective. Now, I want to normalize this quote-unquote issue as I believe that this is a normal occurrence in any good parent and child relationship. Constructive argument, that is. Don't just argue for the sake of arguing. Can I get a show of hands if at some point in your life you've had an argument with your parents of any sort, with uh, a parental figure or your parents? Can I get a show of hands? Okay. Every single person in the audience has a hand up right now. So it's something that's universal, and yet it isn't talked about a lot. From my experience growing up, I was always told to eat well, exercise regularly, get good grades, get good amounts of sleep, and watch out for my mental health by both my teachers, my friends, and even my parents. But I can't remember a time where I was told to maintain a good a relationship with my parents. And it's interesting for me because, as you've all just proven, it's something that's uh, occurs in everybody's life, yet it barely ever gets mentioned, which is why I want to shine light onto this topic so that everyone is aware of it. Ultimately, my goal is for people to understand the ins and outs of parental dilemma so that they can have a healthier and uh, better relationship with their parents or their child. So a phrase that I'm going to be re referring to a lot and which is also the main idea of my speech is called the generation gap. Now, some of you may have heard this uh, before, and different people will have different definitions for it. However, to me, the most simple and easy to understand version of this is that the generation gap refers to the gap that separates the beliefs and behaviors of individuals from different generations. And in the context of a parent and their child, it's the gap between the parent's generation and the child's generation. Now, with the world ever rapidly changing, these gaps can occur from even a few years of a difference. So I have a sister that's about two years younger than me, and I know uh, some kids that are around her age, and whenever I talk to these guys, they say things that I can't even begin to understand, right? And they're only two years younger than me. I feel old when I talk to these kids. The fact that I'm calling them kids make me sound old, right? And if I can have a gap with my sister, who's two years younger than me, imagine how big that gap is from a parent's generation to their child. Now, with a generation gap, it also comes with different values and philosophies. So a little story about my mom and dad. My parents were born smack bang in the middle of the Vietnam War. So growing up, their only goal was to study, get a job, and be financially stable, and create a life where money would no longer be an issue. They grew up poor, unsure where their next meal would come from. So therefore, their mentality was that either I have a secure income and live a good life, or I don't have money and I suffer. So which is why when a person my age is asked, hey, what do you want to do in the future? And the answer was, I want to play video games for the rest of my life, or any job that doesn't fit into the mindset of our parents. It makes our parents really mad. Uh, now, I'm not saying that the choice of playing video games for a living is bad. It's just that most parents these days would probably disagree with that. They spent their lives building a good life for their kids, only for their kids to choose something that, in our parents' opinion anyways, may or may not break all that hard work down. Most people in my generation don't have to worry about the same things as our parents. We have the freedom to pretty much freely choose what we want to do with our lives. And many of us end up choosing things that don't fit into what our parents think. And part of why children and parents clash is because of these opposing values. Parents want their children to understand the hardships of the real world, whereas the child wants to freely believe in what they're doing and do the things that they think that are right for them. Now back to the gamer idea. Most parents these days likely don't even understand what that means, right? Esports. And it's possibly because they aren't up to date with the modern world, but also it's because that, that job or that career simply didn't exist when they were growing up. And so it's understandable for parents to be skeptical and cautious about agreeing to something that they don't even know. Parents and their kids grow up in completely different worlds. Therefore, there are things that both sides won't understand about the other side. Now, with all this said, I know that there are also parents out there who are very upset with today's world. So shout out to all those people. I'm a person from this generation, and sometimes I can't even keep up with the trends that come out. So if you're a parent who's up to date, that's absolutely amazing. So to begin to solve this issue, 
we need to understand where both sides is coming from. So we'll start with the child's perspective, because it's easier for me. As children, teens, young adults, most of us always want to be right, and we don't want to hear other people's opinion, especially not from our parents. Most of us want to be independent and believe in everything we do. For some of us, our point of view is that just because our parents are older, more experienced, they know absolutely everything with 100% certainty. An example for when an argument may occur because of this is when parents are debating on what their kids should be doing in the future. Right? We've all been there, having that conversation with your parents. And we've all probably heard about the Asian parent stereotype, right? Now, in my experience, I find this to be somewhat true. And the story is that in an parent, Asian parent's mind, there are only three suitable career choices. Number one, the doctor. Number two, the business person. And number three, the engineer. Now, over my life, I've had countless conversations about my future with my parents. Now, in the beginning, uh, mostly from my dad, uh, he was adamant about me studying and eventually becoming an engineer. And I absolutely hated that. And we had many, many arguments over the years because of it. Now, over time, uh, naturally, and through my persuasion, saying things like, hey, dad, I don't like engineering. I think this, this is a better career suited uh, career for me. And it still has a high chance of making good money for me. And because of this, he opened up more. And he accepted my choice. But he will never let go of an opportunity to remind me how great of a career choice engineering would be. He'll say things like, oh, yeah, 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 your career choice is great. And he'll proactively ask about my choice as well. Like, he'll say things like, oh, what universities are good for your course? Uh, what, what countries are good for your course? And he'll help with my decisions. But he'll always add in the sentence, you sure you don't want to be an engineer? And go on about how great it is and how I could be the next Elon Musk. Now, this links back to the difference in values. These three careers, doctor, business person, and engineer, are arguably the three safest uh, and most likely to be successful uh, careers, which is why our parents want to, this, which is why our parents want their kids to choose it. It's safe and it's risk-free. An example of the generation gap, because parents value success over the risks. Now, what many of us want more than anything is to make our parents proud, and oftentimes the pressure and the goals that we put on ourselves are because of this desire. We care about what our parents think. We care about how they react to our achievements. And we want that feeling of approval. We want our parents to be proud, but we're doing it our way. And nothing can change that, not even our parents. So now that we know uh, the child's perspective, let's move on to the parents. Parents want what's best for their child. And oftentimes, they don't sugarcoat what they say. They say what they mean, even if it's harsh. Why? Because it's the truth. As they're older, uh, more experience, they've seen more of the world than their child has. They know what it takes to survive, and they want to pass this knowledge on to their child because they don't want their child to fail. Some parents may, uh, may think that their kids are overconfident and blinded by the fact that they were able to grow up in a safer world than their parents. And it's difficult for the parents to convey this message across because the majority of kids and teens these days didn't have to grow up with the same harsh environment as their parents. And therefore, they don't understand how the world actually works, a, uh, uh, an example of the generation gap. Therefore, whatever they say won't resonate with their kids, meaning that their kids won't listen. Now, I'm not a parent yet, I think, I hope. But if I was, and my child didn't, didn't listen to my advice and disobeyed me, even when I know for a fact that I'm right, that would anger me to the max. And this is where the conflict and dilemma begins. When one side thinks they're right, and the other side doesn't listen and disagrees. Now that we know the perspectives of both sides, what are some solutions? To me, the main thing for both sides to learn is this, understanding. Both sides need to understand where the other side is coming from. And while they may disagree, they should be able to respect each other's opinion. Uh, for me, when I was younger, whenever I got into an argument with my parents, I would get absolutely livid with them. I'd throw crazy tantrums and disagree with their opinion, disregarding it completely in an instant. Nowadays, uh, growing up uh, and becoming older, I like to think that I'm not as stubborn. I put their ideas into consideration. I still disagree with it most of the time. But now, instead of ignoring it, uh, I analyze it and see if it fits with how I think. 
And there will be nights after an argument where I'll lay in my bed, ready to sleep, and then think about what my parents said. If it matches into how I think, then I use that advice. If it doesn't, then I disagree, <laughs> respectfully. And I think that the easiest way for both sides to get closer is through communication. Parents should be like buddies with their children. Now obviously, be stern and serious when you need to, but be friendly most of the time. This allows for more talking opportunities to occur, which in turn builds a strong relationship. Now, some parents may ask, well, what if my child doesn't want to talk? What if they don't want to share? Well, some kids simply just don't want to share every single aspect of their life with their parents. And that's completely fine and understandable. The last thing you want to do as a parent is to overstep boundaries, because it makes your child really uncomfortable. If your child is uncomfortable, they'll distance themselves, and it will make communicating a lot harder. So the best way for a parent to show support to their child, while it's not pushing boundaries, is to simply be there for them when they need it or when they want it. Now this can be initiated by simply saying to their child, hey, I'm here if you need someone to talk to, and if you don't want to talk to me, that's fine. Just know that I'm here if you need me. Simple, straight to the point, and easy. The parent gets their point across, and the kid isn't uncomfortable. So, to conclude, the main solution for parental dilemma is understanding from both sides and respecting each other's opinion. Both need to understand that the environment in which they grow up are completely different from one another. Therefore, everyone will have their own different values and beliefs, and that may or may not clash with each other. If both sides are able to understand where the other side is coming from and uh, aim to find middle ground with each other, it can help build a healthier and stronger parent-child relationship. Thank you.